everyone. What's up? This is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com and welcome to episode 28. And we're talking all about what makes a good audiobook. We'll talk about the good and the bad of audiobook narration from the listener's point of view. We'll be talking all about what we like and what we don't like, what makes it pleasant and what makes it horrible. So if you want to get in on this conversation or give some feedback on this topic, let me know what you think and tweet at me on Twitter at ShelfAddiction. Joining me is fellow book and audiobook lover, Classy Green. She also is the Illinois chapter organizer for the Mocha Girls Read Book Club. Hey, Classy, thanks for joining me. Hi, Tamara. How are you? I'm fabulous. It's a Hi. good. It's a good morning. <laughs> it is. It really is. Yeah, it's nice and sunny. It's not too hot yet, and you know, it's good. Right. It's crisp morning here in Illinois. Uh, I, I love this weather. Just yeah. when I took my dog for a walk and it was beautiful. So I started my day out great. Yay, get, got out and got a walk in. That's good. You know, that's the only reason sometimes I think maybe I should get a dog is so I actually get out and walk more. Yes, <laughs> yes, because they will remind you. Yeah, and if you don't, you'll pay for it, right? Yes. <laughs> that's not good. Oh, well, see, that's probably why I don't have a dog yet. <laughs> so I'm saying. Yes. So we're going to talk about audiobooks today, and I know you enjoy a good audiobook as much as I do. So let's start off with talking about some things that make an audiobook good, why we like them, maybe not only why we enjoy audiobooks, but what makes a good narrator as well. So we can just toss it all in. Okay, so you start. Okay. Um, good, I would say voice variation. Mm -hmm. um, I need to know that when they had more than one character in the book, I need to know when that other character is coming in or leaving. Uh, those are good uh, audiobooks for me. Someone who can change up their voice, um, authentic accents, consistency. If you're going to have a Nigerian accent or any kind of other kind of accent, uh, it needs to be consistent throughout the book. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've read a couple. I've listened, excuse me, to a few books where you can tell where whoa the accent is changing. Uh, it doesn't sound authentic. Um, those are some of my um, pointers about a, a good book. Uh, I mean, good audio book and inflection cadence. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. got to have a nice pace to it. Um, mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, you have to draw me in. It, yeah, you know, it's it's a, it's a good quality for the book. It makes the book interesting. I'm like, if it's mystery and you have me on the edge of the seat, uh, edge of my seat, or you're a cliffhanger, I need to feel that. So, mm -hmm. those are some things I love about audiobooks and a good narrator. You know, I you know that you mentioned that I really love when I'm able to feel like I'm visualizing the books and a good narrator can make me feel like I'm watching a movie instead yes. of just listening to words. Right. And that's the best because you don't want to, you know, if you're in your car, you want to stay in your car the extra two minutes to finish, you know, yes. the chapter or, you know, that when you feel drawn in, that's just the best thing ever. Yes. And, you know, I also agree with you as far as like tone and inflection and different voices, being able to stretch your voice. I mean, narrators are essentially actors and actresses, in my opinion. So voice actors, basically, they need to be able to if it's a male narrator, he needs to be able to read for a feminine voice and not sound awkward or falsetto. <laughs> Right. Or squeaky. And, or too, yeah. yeah I've, I've heard I've heard that before. It's too high pitch and it's like it, it's not natural. Right. And right. same for the female. Like there, there's a female narrator. She needs to be able to make her voice more masculine without it being awkward. And right. it just needs to be natural. And I especially like when they're able to pull off men and women and children sometimes Yes. And maybe an accent or two. I mean, that's a real talented narrator who can just throw all that in the mix and you never get confused. You never question who's talking. Yes. And that's that. Right. If I can't can't figure out. Wait a minute. Is this Susie or is this John? Yeah, that that's not good. Those are very key issues. Um, but you know what? I have a question for you. So have you found that male narrators do better with female voices or all around voices or female narrators do better? Uh, 
I feel like female narrators do better. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard that too. Um, they do a much better job with male, female kids. Some of the male author, I mean, male narrators have a hard time to me. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a very few that do mm-hmm. a great job. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy who reads for J.R. Ward's books. Um, he's been doing the angel share in the bourbon Kings. I think his name is, Oh, I cannot remember his name. But, you know, her books are like third person, essentially. And, of course, you're, you know, quoting people. There's no real protagonist. Like, everyone's kind of almost equal. Okay. (laughs) So, you know, he actually, I can hear his voice in my head right now. He actually does okay (laughs) when he speaks for the women. And he has, like, this southern twang sometimes. It's like, wow, he does a good job. But he's a good one. And he's, he's got that down. He's one of the guys that can pull it off. Yeah, I, and I think um, J- R.C. Bray does an excellent job. He does all the voices, and I can tell when the female is, you know, what what the female character is coming in, the male character, all of them. So I don't have to go back and say, now who's talking now? Who's speaking? Mm-hmm. That that's important. Mm-hmm. You know what else I love is when the producers or the casting people, whoever chooses the narrator, the author, I like when they pick someone that is appropriate voice wise for the age of the characters. Um, Sometimes I think that also lends to the ability and the skill of the narrator when they can't bend their voice to that way. But, you know, sometimes you get a book where you're reading about like a 21 year old and you're it sounds like you're listening to a 60 year old, you know, that's just not good. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. And I've heard some older narrators doing that and older people, when your voice, when the older you get, your voice changes and it becomes a little crackle. Um, I don't know. I had a girlfriend with, who said she listened to an audio book and she could hear the narrators. Oh gosh. I, I hate to say that her dentures oh. in that clicking. And I I was like, are you kidding me? So I went back and listened and you can hear that little click from the dentures. And she said it just totally threw her off. I'm listening. The, the character is 20 something like 27. And you you can obviously tell this is an over 60 year old woman. And know she was an author who was narrating her book. So mm, not that's good. not good. She no. should have spent the was she, was she an indie author? Do you know? No, she was. Tony Morrison. Oh gosh. Yeah. Somebody was, stop her. Somebody <laughs> It was Tony Morrison. I'm sorry. I love her. And that's the thing, it's like some of those those authors that we we love and you know, they're famous and they're, you know, beloved. It it's just like I hate to say it, but you should have just spent the extra money and got a narrator because I can hear the characters weren't believable. So that's one of those things where I think maybe if I'd have read the book Mm-hmm. I could have used my um, own imagination and see who, uh, uh, I think her name was Bride, was the mm-hmm. character. But with Tony doing it, the 27-year-old Bride seemed like a 60-year-old woman mm. in my eyes. So. And that's a shame because, you know, you never know before you get into it which way yes. it's going to go. You know, yes. and a narrator can, like, raise that book up a couple notches or it can just ruin it. It could ruin yes. it. Um yes. And that's on top of if the writing is good or bad. So it's that to consider as well. Yes. But I, oh goodness, I hate when that happens, especially if you've already listened to it for, I don't know, an hour or so, then you've got that voice in your head and it's like, will it ever, I don't know. It's like, once I've started, it's almost ruined it right off the bat. Right. And that's the thing, like I'll, I'll listen and, and my review is horrible. And then I'll go back and look on Goodreads or other um, sites and they love the book. And I'm like, what did they see that I did not see? Um, and maybe it is the audio. Maybe mm-hmm. it's because the narrator did a poor job and they saw it from a different point of view by reading it and they used their own voice. So that, that could be the bad maybe of um, audio. Yeah, but on that flip side, like, there was a book where, what book was it? 
Like one of my recent book club books, it was like dreadful. I hated it. I'm like, it's so bad. I couldn't get through it. And then someone said, you should have listened to it on audio. It was good on audio book. I'm like, really? I'm like, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. That's how the um, brief, wondrous life of Oscar Wilde, um, because he did a lot of Spanish in there and he didn't add any footnotes of um, what the Spanish word said. But listening to it just with... Um, you could kind of figure out what the Spanish words meant mm -hmm. just by, you know, the before and after. I can't remember the term for that, um, but it was easy. But for people to read it, it was very hard because they had to go and look up what the Spanish word means and go back. And um, so, yeah, I love the book because I did audio. The people in my group were frustrated. They were like, there are too many Spanish words and he should have added footnotes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Yes. <laughs> unfortunate for them, lucky for you. <laughs> yes, I thought it was a great book. And you know, maybe that's a good idea for like people in book clubs, and or even just in general. If you if there's a book that you really want to finish, but it's not grabbing you on paper, switch to the audio and see if it does any better. Right. Don't give up on it yet. Give it a try on audio. Yes. And another good thing about that is. If you're not sure about it, you don't have to spend money on it. Nine times out of ten, your library will have it on download. <laughs> right. Yes. So. And yeah, oh, Overdrive is awesome. For my, I, love I don't know. It. Do you have Overdrive with your library? I do. I love it. Okay. Yes. Although I have to say, the app could stand to be a little better. Yes. I, you know. I they, agree. I don't think they've updated it in a long time. It's like they need some programmers or user interface experience people or something the app could be a little better but you know it's, it gets you what you need you know right. so it works for free yeah for free yes yeah <laughs> yes. absolutely i love it yeah so then what else uh also you know let's talk about a few of the reasons why audiobooks are good options to to try not only you know, if you're having a hard time with a book, but you know, everyone says they don't have time to read a book. And I think that oh. is like the biggest cop out. I'm sorry. Everyone yes. has time. Right. <laughs> you could do. And that's what my goal was this year is I do a lot of audio, but I was also trying to do some print or mm -hmm. ebook or, you know, something in my hand. So I started donating at least one hour to two hours a day, an hour on my lunch break, an hour when I get home. But audiobooks, the convenience of it is so awesome. Uh, you can, like when I walk the dog, I just did like two chapters walking the dog. Or when I'm working out, um, you can finish a book. The other thing is those long books. You mm -hmm. know, like one of our uh, book club books was James Baldwin, Just Above My Head. It was over 500 pages. Oof. Yes. And it was, in, and it's an older book and it was tiny print. And I'm like, oh, no. No, no, no. I can't. I can't do that. I, mm -hmm. Now that I didn't have the time for in a month. Um, yeah. So I did audio and I, every waking minute when I got up in the morning, I was listening to it and getting ready. So you, you can knock out on a large amount of time on a book with mm -hmm. audio. So yes, you can. Like especially, you said, if you, especially if you have like, I don't think overdrive does this. Well, it might, I'm not sure. Don't quote me, but I know audible does this. I usually listen at 1.5 or yes. two. It, it right. depends on how fast, how slow the dialogue is. I can go up to two and you will right. knock it out even faster. Yes. Right. And yeah. I did figure I found that out a couple months ago that I could do that. I didn't realize that. And it does help when you can get through uh, a book quicker, especially long, long books. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes just the voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. in my head, the guy's voice was just kind of, I don't know. He was fast paced for me, but those are great options to speed it up. Yes, because, you know, it's it's really noticeable. Sometimes the narrator just has a slow cadence naturally. So it's kind of like, oh, come on. OK, I'm going to speed this up. And, yeah. and other times they are kind of fast talking anyway. So you right. might not need it. Yes. So it's case by case. I needed that with my last book. Which and was, it was that? on Overdrive. I know. My last book was All the Missing Girls by <laughs> Miranda, Megan Miranda. Or was it? Megan Miranda and mm -hmm. her cadence. She was flat the whole time. Uh, 
she didn't pick up until probably like 78 the narrator which was rebecca ross she didn't pick up until like 78 percent of the book mm-hmm. and i was like really did, did somebody just tell you <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Yeah. And I really wish I had that option to speed up. And she may, it may be on overdrive. But I'm going to check it out when we finish. Well, you know, I know for sure Scribed doesn't have that feature. Like I have a monthly Scribed subscription. So you get so many books and like an audio book every month. Okay. And that is what kind of makes me sad about their app is they don't have that function. I'm like, why wouldn't you have it? Right. <laughs> So that, that is that is key. So I will. I'm going to use that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, you know how earlier we're, we were talking about um, a bad example of someone reading their own book, you know, Toni Morrison. <laughs> well, yes. I actually am listening to one now that is a good example of someone okay. reading their own book. And this is fiction. I, I have a, a nonfiction title that I like, but this is Ghost Talkers by Mary Robinette Cowell. Um now, when I looked her up, at first I'm like, oh, she sounds really good. And I didn't realize it was her reading her own book at first until I looked it up. And I'm like, wait, she's narrating it too. And then that made me look her up on Audible and come to find out she is a narrator. So she's narrated other books. books. So oh. then she wrote a book. So I think that is a unique situation so she's not just an author reading her own book she's a narrator who is also an author who wow. narrates her own book that is that's a, a a double whammy yeah but it also an awesome whammy <laughs> yeah she's doing a good job with it okay so got that wrote that down yeah it's definitely it, historical fiction so it's definitely a little but it has fantasy um it's about like um psychics and mediums during okay. world war one I, I think so yeah it's, right. it's different right because some authors i believe they read their book mm-hmm. um, and not narrate their book or tell the story they just read the book and some examples of that would be some poor examples i would say would be terry mcmillan i just did her almost forgot about you Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's supposed to be a love story of her missing out on her past loves and the whole time I felt she was mad mm-hmm. I felt mad you know and that's something to, else too with books I felt mad with her and I'm like you're looking at past loves I know there's some some bad but there's some good and I didn't feel any kind of feelings with her I felt you know, mad at the men, <laughs> you know, I felt no emotion at all. And that's something with audible books. Um, I need to feel some kind of emotion. If she's sad, I'm sad. If she's happy, I can feel that kind of joy. Or when mm-hmm. I'm done, I feel inspired. Mm-hmm. And she was just gruff the mm. whole time. And, mm. and so on the flip side, <laughs> that I was her personality. I'm just saying it was, <laughs> It was. And after meeting her at BDA yeah. and then listening to this book, I, I think I might be better off reading her book instead of doing audio because I can put my own imagination and my own voice in, and see it from a different point of view. And again, book club, because that was our book last month, book club readers loved it. Mm-hmm. I it, it wasn't my favorite. Yeah. But on the flip side of author doing a great job narrating their own book I would say is year of yes yes Shonda that's Rock. what I was gonna say yes oh my god yes I've listened to that book twice and I'll probably do it again because when I'm done with her book I feel everything she's so uh she's comical she's you know everything she when, when she was sad and low when she talked about her lowest parts you felt it yeah when she was high you felt it I felt and you know she did a phenomenal job but my book club who read it did not like it they felt like she was self-centered and she was this this and that and I'm like you, you didn't get her emotions you should have list th- that was a great audio yeah and you know actually when listening to like a memoir type situation I think almost 
if the if the narrator if the author can narrate well it's worth it because yeah. then you know when they're being funny when they're being cheeky when they're being versus reading it with your own inflection you right. know what they intended yes right yeah. memoirs yeah that is that that's right that's a good example memoirs probably are great for the author to narrate because they are going on their own emotion it's their life they're right. speaking in, in first person. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You know so, who else had a really good one? Um, and I don't, I never really necessarily liked this, you know, performer. She's a performer before I read her book. Like I thought, man, she's all right. But after listening to her on audiobook, I'm like, oh yeah, I love that woman. And that is Tina Fey. Her bossy pants. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I would totally agree because when you were talking, I'm like, is she gonna say Tina Fey? Is she gonna yeah. say Tina Fey? Oh, she was hilarious. Yes, yes, she's and funny. Does, I'm like, wow. It, <laughs> yeah, and it just gives you a whole new light on the person. Like you said, to see her on Saturday Night Live and Thirty Rock, you're like, she's okay. But to ha- to read her, to listen to her, phenomenal. Yes, love her book. And see, that's another book I could listen to again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I love Tina Fey's Bossy Pants. Yeah. So so authors, if you're writing a memoir and you're good at narrating, yes. <laughs> do it. Do it. We want to hear about you and make us yes. feel like we get to know you during the process. So right. it's a good thing. Yes. Good. So what are some other audiobooks or audiobook narrators that you really like? I like R.C. Bray. Uh, he is a, a male author who he usually does like three and four characters in a book. My mm-hmm. favorite probably is Anybody's Daughter by Pamela Samuels Young. Um, he's done all of her books and I love him. And like you said, when you find a, a narrator that you really like, then you look him up or look her up and you're like, okay, what else have they read? Because they do such a great job. Yeah. Um, My other one was Shonda Rhimes, but we mentioned Shonda. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Jen Hammond is another good one. She narrated The Pearl That Broke Its Shell. Hmm. And that's a story of a a young Afghan girl. Okay. Who um, goes through the tradition, I think it's called Bacha Posh, where she's a young girl who um, dresses like a boy. That's a tradition in the Afghan tradition. culture she can dress as a boy into a marriageable age because her father only had girls and mm-hmm. boys uh, daughters couldn't get escorted out they had to be escorted by a man mm-hmm. uh, but Jen Hammond is a white woman but she's a vocal coach mm-hmm. um, and she does an excellent job for an Afghan accent I, I thought she was Afghan wow. she did such a phenomenal job and the other one is Cassandra Campbell mm-hmm. love her one of my favorite books she's did was Everything I Never Told You mm-hmm. by Celeste Ning, N-G. I oh, think. yeah. I've heard of her. Yeah. Yeah. That Cassandra Campbell did an awesome job. That book was a it's a great book. And she's done. I think Cassandra did The Pocket Wife, uh, The Help. She was one of the author's uh, narrators in The Help and The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Yes. I love that. That was another one. Like, it wasn't. Uh, it was definitely nonfiction, but it was what bi- biography style. I, I, yeah, yeah, and I mean that would have been a very difficult book to read, but yes. it was a gem on on here book. I learned so much. I'm like, right. wow, you know, yeah, it, right. The medical terms and the the um, the emotions of the family and her coming with the family. They did an excellent job, and I think Bonnie Bahani Tur- Turpin. Uh, was the daughter of Henrietta. And Mm -hmm. I I like Bahani too. So those are some of my favorite narrators. Yeah. Well, I have a little list. I don't know. And I think I love these all equally for different reasons. (laughs) Um, Maybe not for, you know, they don't do, I guess, as many um, serious like books, but they're all genre fiction books that I've read or listened to rather. And I just love them. Like, um, Tavia Gilbert. I don't know if you've heard of Tavia Gilbert, but she's narrated a ton of books, a ton of books, but I, she's like very multifaceted and 
I mean, she can like really, she has some range with her voice, I tell you. And she's done accents and she's done children and adults and men and women. Okay. Oh, I love it. I cannot get enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I really enjoyed um, Jennifer Ikeda. And she did The Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Another one where I'm not sure I would have read those books in all honesty, but listening to them was a, was a good find. Um, and so also I have to bring up a guy. I want to throw a guy in the mix. So um, Tim Gerard Reynolds. He did a stellar job with the Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. I mean, he's got Australian accents and, um, you know, they have different types of lingo when the different groups of people are talking. So you hear some really high brow speaking and then you hear some really, you know, low end. We work underneath the ground. We're not very educated, somewhat kind of speak. (laughs) So he's got the range. He really does. And he does a great job with it. So those are some that kind of pop out to me, you know, from things that I've listened to, I guess, more recently. But okay. yeah, there's so many. There's so many. I just can't pick a favorite. I I just can't. <laughs> like right. asking to pick your favorite child. <laughs> and see, like that Red Rising, to sit there and read that, like you said, you probably wouldn't have got as much from the book because... It's almost like it's a movie type book. It's so animated that you need those different voices, kind of like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And uh, Harry Potter and, you know, some of those to have an audio is phenomenal um, because it's like you're at the movie. And then when you go see it at the movie, you're kind of like, hey, yeah, I see it. You know, speaking of movies, that would make an amazing movie. That would make an amazing And And if they did it right oh it would be phenomenal it would be like the next big thing that everyone was obsessed with right i mean when you were talking about the voices i could see that it's sometimes books just don't don't do the i mean it does it justice but to have that audio makes Mm -hmm. it so great and like i think too with audio not everybody is learns the same or can uh, process information the same so to have an audio book to bring that story to light, even it helps you. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. Oh, you know, I did have a, two more, two more suggestions. Um, I don't have the narrators written down, written down, but the passage by Justin Cronin, those three books, the narrator does a stellar job there. Um, and that's kind of like a post-apocalyptic vampire book, not a pretty vampire book, not a romance. This is like, <laughs> The peace people had a virus, the government messed with them and tried to do tests on them and created monsters. And so now everyone is sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my, oh my God. <laughs> and then the other one is Illuminae. And um, that's uh, with, oh, my goodness, the names are escaping me right now. I don't know why. I think, it, I think one was Lincoln Hope. Mm-hmm. Olivia Taylor? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's really, really good. Um, that's, you know, a science fiction young adult, but it's, it really feels like an older um, book. And it's the story is told through a series of dossiers about, you know, an attack on a world and then these two ships surviving by the skin of their teeth because the AI went nuts. You know, the artificial oh. intelligence kind of just took over. It was crazy. Um, but it's very good. And I didn't know how that would read, come across on audiobook because I haven't seen the book in person, but people have told me it's like literally like you'd be reading a ship log and then you'd be reading a voicemail. So it is a stack of dossiers. It's a huge book. But the way it comes off on audio, it's like something I never expected. And then you can hear like sometimes noises in the background from the ship. And then the AI sounds like an actual AI. And then it's like they have, oh, it's just like a full immersive experience. It's just like nothing I've ever experienced, really. So you're like in a big, you're in a theater visually. (laughs) Yes. Like IMAX. (laughs) Yes. So while you're walking or while whatever you're doing, you're sitting there. Yeah, Freaky. it's really good. And it's uh, the second book, Gemini, I think comes out next month, I think. so. Okay, see, I have seen that. I have seen the Gemini. 
book yeah. um, is, is a new book coming out. Okay. Yeah. When, when we were at BEA, people were running, trying to get Gemini. And okay. at that time, I didn't know what the hype was. I'm like, right. what is this book that everyone is talking about? And that's so. That's probably where I ever saw it. Yeah. That's my <laughs> recommendations. Ah, okay. Yeah. So before we jump into the things that we don't like necessarily and some bad choices of audiobooks. Let me do a blog rundown. It's time for the blog rundown. Find out what's new on shelfaddiction.com. Hey guys, it's that time again. So I think you already know what I'm going to ask of you. I'm going to ask that you go to shelfaddiction.com and send me a speak pipe voicemail for the genre of the month. I am putting together a really um, fun podcast with uh, all about horror and Halloween as we are leading into October. So for the month of September, you can leave me your recommendations for the horror genre or Halloween themed book. Give me a 60 second or less message, include your name, your state or country, include the author, the title and a one liner telling me why you recommend that book or if you just have some general feedback for me you can leave that there as well so please just go to the website it's on the front page on the right hand side it says leave a voicemail or send a voicemail it's really easy to find so thanks i really appreciate that all right guys so we're going to continue on and i know we talked a little bit about things that we didn't like about audiobooks but i think we're going to continue on with our our um complaints things that we did not like <laughs> Yes. And things that, that don't make it that enjoyable. Um, I would say when the narrator does not have any passion for the story. Um, you ha- When you're reading, you have to immerse yourself into the book um, and become the characters and good or bad. Mm-hmm. If you're narrating, you're selling this book for the author and I need you to have passion and... Um, Instead of telling it, you need to narrate it. I like to, I want to be transported. I think you even said that before. I need to be transported into this story. If I'm walking in the park, if you're walking in the park, I'm walking in the park with you. Right. If we're driving in the car and you're speeding and you're about to hit, I need to, I need to be there. Not walking through the park. No. Yeah. I, I, I need <laughs> to be right there in the story. Um, you should not sound like you're bored. Yeah. You know, I, I just think like when I used to read my kids bedtime stories, you know, I just didn't say, you know, um, the little brown bear went to, I had to use different voices. I had to mm-hmm. make myself the bear and the mom and they were excited. They wanted to hear more. And that's what I need. Um, yeah from a story uh, I'm a narrator and if you don't have that yeah I'm bored if you put me to yeah. sleep it's bad. That's bad and I've had yeah. some, I've had some books where I'm sitting around here you know listening to my book before bed and I'm sleep yeah so, that or like where you have to rewind it like five times because you like you're you zone out you're like wait I missed something what happened <laughs> yes exactly because it's so it's so flat. It's like that professor who's just la la la, and you're like, okay, I am not listening to anything they said. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're like, what did I miss? I've missed over five minutes. Some of the key points. Yeah. And that's the thing. If it's a climax, let me know it's a darn cl- climax yeah. of the story or something exciting. So, yeah. no, you should not be robo. Yeah, don't don't phone it in. And I mean, act like you're reading a, a book that you actually care about and not like, I don't know, a chemistry textbook. Yes. <laughs> or a medical book. Yeah. No. Give me some excitement. If you're sad, let me know you're sad. I, I need all that. But if, you know, I'm doing audio. Yeah, but you know what kills me though? It's like this is a professional business. Just like with you know, movies and television. There are producers. Why doesn't someone say, stop what you're doing? (laughs) This is not working out. (laughs) Cut. Cut. Redo from the beginning. Right. I don't, I don't get it. And I don't know if it was budget. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. But yeah, there's some, some, uh, some bad audio. And I think, I know I've read a, a series before where um, I think we even talked about that before where the first narrator 
did not make it to the second or third um, narration, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, now I see why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are, yeah, you have to have some passion for the story. Yeah, a great example of that, um, like I was telling you, was the Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning. The first narrator, oh, man, she was like, <laughs> the worst and I'm like man I don't know if I can continue with this and then someone told me no keep going keep going trust me and I'm like okay I'll pick up the next one and I did and I was like oh my god (laughs) this is so much better (laughs) yes the angels started singing yes exactly (laughs) like they changed the narrator and it was like a fresh new book it was like it was night and day it was crazy so it's good Right. And like you said, that can, that's a, a, a no sell or, you know, I'll buy or I won't buy mm-hmm. by the narrator. And that's what I find myself doing too, because I do a lot more audio now than ebook or print. I go find out who's narrating. And if you, if I know that narrator is poor, I will not buy the book. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. And that hurts you. I mean, you've got to do research as a publisher, as a st- audiobook studio, You need to know who's good, who's bad, who's getting the bad reviews. And don't let your authors pick those people. Don't even put them in the deck when you give them the audio to listen to for samples. Leave them out. Right. Well, I I Skyped with um, an author, and she didn't even know who her narrator was. Hmm. So I don't know if her agent or her whoever just selected... um, the narrator because when we skype with her you know we had people who read and i said i did the audio and your your narrator he started off poorly and he got better and i told her she's like oh i didn't even know who he was and i'm like really you didn't have a part in that so yeah that's abnormal (laughs) yeah but maybe that's what was happening um with some of these books that are bad um and then i listened to another one of her books and she did switch it up for um well, it was a different book, mm-hmm. but her narrator was better. So maybe she got more involved with mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. but maybe that's what it is. And like I said, it might be budget because she said she didn't make a, a lot of people think she makes a lot of money and she doesn't on these books. So, hmm. well, I'm sorry. I feel like you need to spend the money. It's just like, I feel like just like cover art. Yes. <sighs> You know, you need good cover. I don't care how good that book is. People shop with their eyes. They eat with their eyes. They shop with their eyes. Get good cover art. That will draw more attention. And listen to us. We are readers. We we would not lie to you. (laughs) No. There's some books. Yeah, because when you even go to Barnes & Nobles, the way they set up the books. Yeah. That's the first thing I see. And if it draws my attention, I'm going to go grab it and at least look at the back and take a chance. Yes. So cover art draws attention. And with audiobooks, you want a good spend the money because you open yourself up to a whole new audience with audiobooks that you might have not gotten with print sales. So you don't want a crappy audiobook narrator. And that's, you don't want to just say, well, I'll just throw an audiobook on so I'll have it. You want someone good. Yes. Right. You know, as much as you can afford, that's good. <laughs> right. And that's somebody who's just going to read the book. Because I could just yeah. read the book. That's the thing with audio. I could just read the book if I want. Yeah. And when I do audio, I want more than just somebody reading the book. I want somebody to bring that story to life for me. Mm-hmm. As I yeah. go along my day, I need some excitement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and audio book is, you know, how I, you know, I reading is my, I, joy, I joyfully read. So if I'm going to have audio, I need that same joy. (laughs) Yes. 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 I love to feel like, um, like people, when they, they tell me when I start talking about a book, I feel like they get excitement. It radiates off me when I'm talking about something I really love. Right. And that is what I want to feel every time. (laughs) I'm doing an audio book. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So or, you what, know, when you're recommending a book and somebody says, um, can you recommend a book? And you'll and there's some books I've recommended on print. And then, like you said, you'll say, but you got to do this one on audio. Mm-hmm. I don't care. You know, if you do, if you like the year of yes, buy it, but also buy it, uh, the audio, because I did audio. And after I did audio, I went and bought 
a print copy because there was some stuff I needed to highlight. Even though you can bookmark on audio, mm -hmm. I needed that print book mm -hmm. to highlight. Right. So, and that's the thing too with audio. If it's that good and you just want a copy, like you say, you open yourself up for a whole new audience. I've bought yeah. your audio and your print. Right. So, and there are people that only listen to audiobooks, you know, people yeah. with disabilities or people who can't see or, you know, right. can't read. They yes. will listen to an audiobook. So yeah. you will get a different audience and capture people you wouldn't have in a traditional yeah. way. So right. that's really important, you know. I've worked in special ed for probably, I'm not in that field anymore, but before we didn't have audiobooks. And, um, that has opened up for some students who can't really grasp or, you know, or the attention span to mm -hmm. read a book and to have an audio book is, is just awesome for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it, so now they don't feel like they're left behind. Like you said, right. with disabilities, it's awesome. Right. Absolutely. Another thing that makes a bad audio book, but it also does the opposite. It could be a good audio book if it's if it's used correctly. And that is music and sound effects. It's very important that it be it fit. Like, you know how I gave the example of Luminae earlier? That was a perfect example of sound effects and things that work in a book. Um but sometimes it's like, what is that noise? It doesn't fit. Or this music is too loud. Or, yes. you know, it needs to be done right. So it right. could make something go very, very wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I did listen to a book like that before and was walking. And I had to go like, what was that sound? Because I thought like somebody was, I think it was like crunching leaves or crunching branches. And I had to turn around like, okay, well, what is that sound? And rewound. And it was the book, mm -hmm. but it was odd. Mm -hmm. And maybe I wasn't paying attention, but <laughs> I was just like, what the heck was that? Because I hadn't heard it. I hadn't heard sound throughout the book before. And then, it, I mean, it slowly started doing it more and I, I realized it. And it was a creepy book. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. If you Ooh. <laughs> what book was it? I'm curious. Um, I can't remember. Mm. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, well, that is kind of a like it's a bad ghostly. thing. Okay, yeah. well, well, that is bad when you're not expecting it, and there was no, you know, sound Morning. effects before, and now all of a sudden there is. <laughs> yes, I can't remember. If I find it, I will let you know. But yeah, it was just like, kind of, well, and, and it worked out eventually, but it mm -hmm. was it, it it wasn't a good flow into the book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, another way that it actually works good is this one example, Feed by M.T. Anderson. It worked pretty well in that book. I think I would have hated reading that book because it was about, you know, it's kind of it's weird. It was all about the feed in people's head. So it's a futuristic book. It's a futuristic story where people walk around with a feed inside of their head. So like, let's say they're looking at a TV show or they're looking at I don't know, a book in the store, then the feed would pick up that you're interested in, I don't know, J.R. Ward and start talking about all these things related to J.R. Ward. Or you're in the mall and you look at Nikes and suddenly the feed is telling you sales about oh, the Nike gosh. shoes. And then, so, you know, throughout this audio book, you're hearing commercials and text messages being read from the feed and oh. all these different things. And it's a lot. It is. It's like almost, it's like almost overload with all the okay. things but I think it makes it you understand the what the intent of the book was versus reading it so right because they're feeding you all this information thus yeah yeah so so that that, that does sound like they did an excellent job yeah with, um, producing that book or yeah that I, think audio it, book. I think I gave it um a three but for me if I had read it, it probably would have been a one. I'm just saying, I think like, I think it would have been horrible to read, but the fact that I was listening to it really made me appreciate what the author was trying to do, even though, the, right. you, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, 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 that's good. So let's, okay. What are some audiobooks that you thought were bad that you read and you thought, okay, this, this falls in that bad category that you would never recommend to anyone? God help the child, Toni Morrison. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she, her main character was Bride, which was a young 20-something-year-old woman. 
and Toni Morrison is 70 years old, and her voice is cracking. Mm-hmm. Love Toni Morrison. She's a, a great author, but she did she did not do this book any justice. Um, she, it's one of those books where I just wanted to finish because we love Toni Morrison. This yeah. must be a great book. Yeah. Um, but she did she didn't do a good job. She was flat the whole time, and there were male characters, female characters. Um, no, no, I, I would not reckon it. it I need a youthfulness for Bride, mm-hmm. and Toni Morrison d- did not have any youthfulness in her. She had maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, she did a great job for Bride's mom, but the other characters were all young characters, and she didn't do a good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one is uh, All the Missing Girls by Miranda, Megan Miranda. The, author, the narrator was Rebecca Ross. Uh, she was flat the whole time. There was mm-hmm. points where I fell asleep. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> listening to right, probably mm-hmm. listening to thirty, forty percent of the book. She mm-hmm. didn't really pick up until like seventy eight percent of the book, mm-hmm. um, and it was to the point where when I'm driving, I was hypnotized. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you know? Yes, and it was just like, come on, come on, and there was never a point where I was excited or what was next. It was just like. La, 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 la. You know, it was yeah. very poorly done. And that uh, was one of the, the, the author uh, narratives where you would think the producer would say, cut, you need to pick it up. You yeah. need to, I need to figure, we, they need to know when the book is exciting. And I mean, it, there was a lot of drama in this book, mm-hmm. but I felt none of that until 78% of the book. And I think wow. I did that on Good re- Goodreads and said, it's finally getting to the good part. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Should, yeah, seventy eight percent of the book. Ugh, I hate other... that. That's too far. That's too yes. far. <laughs> yes. I was like, you you drug me along all this way to this, but people gave it good reviews, but audio no. I did not, not so like. Much. Um and I almost forgot about you. I think we mentioned that before. Mm-hmm. Terry yeah. McMillan. She was gruff yeah. the whole time. And um another one would be I'm trying to think. Helen Oya. Oyama, I think mm-hmm. that's how you pronounce her name. Helen Oyama. She did. I'm listening to Bird Snow. Gosh, what is the name of that? Mm-hmm. Bird Snow Snow Boy or Boy? It's just bad, mm-hmm. and it's it's a couple of different uh, narrators, but it's it's just dragging. It's mm-hmm. it's really dragging. So those would be some of the ones I would not recommend. Okay. Well, I have uh, two, I think, um, that come to me right now. And one is Light Between the Oceans by M.L. Stadman. It's narrated by Noah Taylor. Oh, God, that was bad. (laughs) It was bad. I mean, this dude, Noah Taylor, I'm sorry, Noah, but your voice is just, I can't. (laughs) Like, um, he's supposed to have, I think, um, an Australian accent or something. And I didn't really hear much of an accent and his voice, his, his voice was so low. I had to like turn the volume way up and I'm like, Oh, and then his, his cadence, I think I might not have liked. And the story was already kind of dry, you know, there it wasn't really yeah. an action packed story. And then his voice on top of it. I mean, I was like, forcing myself to finish that and that was another one of the ones where i'm like wait i had to go back to the beginning of the chapter because i totally missed half of what he just said right (laughs) because you're like something something important just happened i know it did (laughs) yeah but what was it who was who who was it i don't even know let me just go back right (laughs) It it was bad um, so, yeah, skip out on that one, guys. And <laughs> then uh, also, I would say Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. This is the second book in the Red Queen series. And, you know, the first one, I thought it was okay. You know, I was interested enough. I thought it was good enough that I would continue on, of course. And I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, the narrator wasn't that bad but I I suspect that the story is kind of bad and it's one of those uh, where maybe things might pick up in the last 30 percent 
but it's getting there. It's like, ah, my goodness, is it worth it? Right. You know, I actually put it on hold. I still have it. I'm going to try to finish it. You know, I really try to finish everything I start, but it's definitely on the back burner. I might get back to it in the next six months. I might not. I don't know. (laughs) I just got to no, no, can't do it. I was just, I was looking through my Audible queue and I'm like, gosh, I've had three books on there and yeah. And it's like, when are you going to finish them? And it's like, eventually, every once in a while, I'll do a couple chapters here and there. And I'm like, oh God, but I paid for it. I got to listen to it. Oh, I know. It's like, oh, you know, I feel like, I know Audible is really good about returns, but I try to do it, like, if I don't like it, I try to do, say something about it within the first two weeks. Like, look, I just yeah. got it. I just listened to it. It's, it's bad. I don't want it. Or, you know, the sound quality is bad or something. But but yeah, when I've I, had it for two months, I'm like, oh, I'm stuck with it. Gotta finish it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's something I should think about doing if it's that bad within the first couple like you said, days, just mm-hmm. give it up. But I'm so type A. I'm like, I'm going to finish it. If I start it, I'm going to finish it. But yeah, maybe I should just give it, give up and give it up and say, you guys can yeah. have this one back. And you know what? In general, I do kind of feel pressure to finish it because I hate to have something unfinished. But at the, on the flip side of that, I feel like life is too short to waste on bad books. Bad yeah. movies, bad TV, bad anything. So if I'm right. not enjoying it, I need to just make myself more comfortable with throwing in the towel. Right. And Audible does, like, they have a great policy of returning. So I don't know, like you said, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, because it's definitely a thing. Like, I pr- and I even hate to even mark things DNF on Goodreads. Like, I have less than five books on there. I I really mull over it before I decide not to read it. I really hem-haw around before I say, okay, officially DNF. Right. You know? Yeah. But it's got to be done sometimes. <laughs> right, because you want to have some kind of hope that maybe, just maybe. Because yeah. some books are like that. They start off slow and they get better, but... Uh-uh. You kind of tell when it's not going to happen. <laughs> right. So, I don't know. Is there anything else we want to say on this audiobook topic? I really love audiobooks. I could, I just keep talking about different audiobooks all day long. <laughs> yeah. Only thing I would say is one of the, probably another thing I didn't like in one of my worst books, um, and it's still in my queue. I'm, well, no, I, I just finished it. It was the... the James Baldwin just above my head mm-hmm. and it was older um it's an older book you know it's James Baldwin and I don't know if it was like you said a combination of a bad story and the narrator mm-hmm. but it was a lot of flashbacks okay and, and I don't I usually don't mind flashbacks yeah. but this flashback I, like you, I think you mentioned that with feet it felt like I was on a merry-go-round and his pace was fast and I felt like my head was spinning I could not grasp uh, the, the story at all so mm-hmm. again that's one of the things if you're going to do a flashback that's that's a talent you got to do flashbacks correctly and right. I started off with the print and I had a hard time and moved over to audio hoping that would help and that mm-hmm. didn't help mm. so, yeah that's yeah, just bad <laughs> yeah again I should have gave it up like you said once, yeah just give it up and that's probably going to be my goal now I buy it I don't like it within the first couple of days it's gone but that's yeah. another issue i'll buy them and i let it sit in my queue and don't read it immediately mm-hmm. i do that too like i just bought three books by danica dark off a recommendation they had a buy to get one free sale so mm-hmm. i just bought three books in a series by this chick never read a book by her never listened right. to an audio book and now it's been a week since i bought it and it's just yes. sitting there i'm like oh yeah See, so that should be our goal. <laughs> don't buy if we do buy it. Like at least start reading it. If we don't like it, return it because it's like a wasted credit. Yeah, then I'm <laughs> I know. I mean, Audible's gotten so much money off me. It's crazy because I've I've also bought credits. Like you know how they have a little sale. I guess where you buy credits at a lesser rate, where it's like eleven dollars a credit versus fifteen or yeah. something. Yes. Uh, I'm telling you. They, I need stock in Audible. Well, I guess that would be Amazon. Right. Because <laughs> they got a lot of my money. Oh, yeah, they, they have do. have a lot of my money. Yeah, it's a, it's a novelty that, 
And it's funny, I used to always think I will not pay for audiobooks. At first, I was hardcore about getting them from the library, but then sometimes the library would take too long to get the new releases and they would have a hundred people waiting for it. For and one I'm like, book. yes. And I'm like, I can't. And so then I, I caved. I did the 30 day trial. And then I'm like, I'm just, I don't care. I'm just going to keep it. So, yep. I'm hooked. <laughs> yes. I'm like, for $15 a month, it's worth it. Yeah. That you could do a lot worse with 50. I could spend that in a day for dinner. A day. Yeah. So 15 a month. Yeah. Yeah. And so. you know, another trick I learned though, if you have a Kindle, um, this, and some, I've done this. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy the Kindle book with the Audible add-on than it is oh. to spend the credit. So, for example, like um, there was one book that was on sale for one ninety nine on Kindle, and the audio narration was one ninety nine add-on. So then you just buy the Kindle along the the ebook along with the audio book, and I'd rather spend five dollars than use that one credit that cost oh. me fifteen. So see? always look, always look first to see For if the, it's cheaper to buy them as a bundle than to use the credit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And another, another thing with Audible, you can share a book. You yeah. can share one book for free. So after, I think you can only do it once you finish the book mm -hmm. and it'll say you can share with a friend and send it. So, you know, if I have a book in my my uh, library, I say, okay, I'm going to give this to uh, Tamara. Yeah. You know, I could say, yeah. you know, this, right. Yes. It's so a highly wait, recommended this, book. I is say, this Tamara, all books that. or is it only certain um, publishers that are allowing it? Is it everything? No. Right. Because I know Amazon does that where that you can only share. But I think it's any book that you buy. You can share one book. So... I'm trying to look it up. But, yeah, I think it's all books mm -hmm. you can share. But I know, like, on Amazon, when you buy it from your Kindle, there's only a few books that you can share with your friend. But so far, every book that I've read, it'll allow me to share it. Yes, that's awesome. I yes. love Audible. So, I hope they don't change that. No. Right. So go back in your queue and see, like, what books you finished. And, and um, I think you have to click on that, the three dots at the top. Mm-hmm. Right. I think it says before you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to make my little list up and of the things that I've read. And you can see if there's anything on there that you want to see because it's after it's read, right? So I'd have to right. sort the things that I finished. Right. Yeah, because Alicia from um, my book club, she, she gave a book to me. And, and that's how I got... I hear your audiobook. What is it? <laughs> oh, that I'm sorry. That was Walls the Walls Protocol. I was trying to do it. I'm sorry. Oh, no, but no, yeah, no that's okay. how, Yeah, that's how she shared that book with me and okay. and it was for free cuz she's like, "Oh, you got to read this book. It's so great." And mm -hmm. then she said, "You know what? I'm going to share." It. And they just send you an email and and it, it drops it into your queue. So, is it timed or can that person keep it for like a couple weeks or is it only for, cause I remember with Amazon Kindle, I think that that person could only have it for like 14 days or something. No, I've had this book for I don't know how long cause it's okay. a long, it's a medical kind of book. So no, it's mine, I believe. Oh, wow. So it's like gifting a book really. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Cause she gave that to me back in May. Okay. And I still have it. So yeah, gifting a book. Wow. Well, it's definitely worth it then. Yes. Because that's really like two for one, really. Mm hmm. That's very cool. Okay. Yes. yes. Awesome. I'll be using <laughs> that function. Okay. <laughs> We've got to do this again, Classy, for sure. Yeah. I, I would love to do a, another topic with you. Yes. Go there. <laughs> yes. I wrapped someone else into my podcast grip. Oh, hey, if, if we're talking books, I could go there. I could yeah. go there with you. So, and just trying to get people to love books. They don't understand there's so many ways to love, you know, to get involved in a book. So, yeah. Yeah. Not that many people like it's like almost audiobooks are almost this. Um, secret society almost because I feel like some people get try to make people feel bad for listening to audiobooks like they're cheating or something yes. and I don't see that at all no. I don't feel that way about it at all so no no 
You know, come out of the dark and into the light and talk come to us about over. audiobooks. Yes, come over to the dark, the bad Cross side, the, I guess. Right, cross over. <laughs> yes. My girlfriend used to think that way too, but all of a sudden she's on the train mm-hmm. and trying to read a book on the train with all those different noises she realized it was becoming hard. So now she's doing audible. And I was like, don't you love it? She's like, Oh gosh, it's so great. You know, cause you're in your own little world without, you know, that sound of everybody else. So, you know, she's completed two, three books in a, well, two books in a week at least. So, and that's what my one girlfriend was saying. How do you, when I would do my progresses, how do you get to read that many books? I said, because I'm doing audio and I'm doing print. Yeah. And, and that's my, 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 um, that's my passion or my little guilty pleasure reading yeah me too and that is a quick way to double your intake you know yeah. like I read I'm, I might read on my lunch hour read before bed but while I'm at my desk doing mundane tasks I'm listening yeah. to audiobooks while I'm right. driving home I'm listening to audiobooks while I'm shopping yeah. in the store I'm listening to audiobooks thank you yeah because you do you have all that little empty space yep. of time you you can get a book in so, you know, this might be TMI for some people, but you go into the restroom, you bring your audio book. I'm just saying. Taking a nice bath. Yes. I bring have your audio book. My little spa day. I'm sitting yes. in the tub and I'm listening to my book. Yeah. So, hey, it's like listening to music to me, too, you know, mm-hmm. and I find myself, I don't even listen to the radio anymore. Yeah, me neither. I know. I'm always slow on new songs because I don't listen to the radio. No. <laughs> I am yeah. too. I'm like, what is that? You don't listen to the. Ra- I'm saying, like, no, my. I'm usually listening to a book. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. And my yeah. husband even knows it. You know, he, what are you listening to now? Or I'll find, like, he'll ask something about the story and he's in the other room. And I'm like, oh, are you listening to my book, huh? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, like, hopefully he's not listening to anything too risque. I'm sure. Uh... Uh, the walls... <laughs> <laughs> right. I think you told me Fever series. I need to. Uh... Yeah, turn yeah. the volume down, put some headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, was, it was the Walls Protocol. That was a medical book, and he okay. was kind of listening. He's like, so what was that? You know, and I was like, yeah. So, you know, you can. They do get drawn in. And like I told you, when my daughter was home for college, I was listening to Dark Matters. Mm-hmm. I saw that guy at um, BEA picked up his book, and I, and they gave us a audio, I think, with it. And I had turned it off when they came down because I was like, oh, maybe they don't want to listen to it. Cause she, mm-hmm. But she heard it. And she's like, don't turn that off. I want to hear what's happening next. So yeah. it does draw, you know, some people in. So. Yeah. Yes. Fabulous. I say draw yeah. as many people as you can into the audiobook world. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I used to do with them as kids when we take drives. I'd get a, a nice kid book, and that was on CDs, and we listened to books. So. Mm-hmm find a, a book with the kids so and yeah. that's a good way too to, to for uh, families and, with yeah. kids yeah to read them yeah that's a good idea yeah. all right so let everyone know where they can find you on twitter if they want to reach out to you before we ha- sign off here um they can find me at classy green c-l-a-s-s-y green at uh-huh. on twitter awesome well thank you for joining us it's been fun Thank you. Always a good time talking about books. All right. So thanks for listening to that today, guys. See you next week. But before you go, please hit that follow button on Spreaker, the only place where you can listen live or subscribe and listen later on iTunes, Google Play Music, YouTube, and the Stitcher app. That's it for today. Thanks. And until next time, happy reading. Bye, guys. <laughs>